finally, part three of the van restoration. If you've watched some of my videos, you'll sort of know as in what I want to do with it. I did always plan to give this away around about 100,000 subscribers to a subscriber, but we need to get it workable and to get it as looking best as we physically can for someone to use either f uh, straight to self-employed and apprentice, that sort of stuff. I mean, I've already done some stuff inside, which you'll see from part one and part two, which I'll link below, but it's been sat here for a very long time. So the door opened. Oops, I don't have a jump lead and I'm gonna try and do something that I've seen online where we get a 12 volt battery and we stick it across live neutral. And I've just realized there's a stone on the windscreen as well. Oh, look at that. Engine's still there, so no one's robbed it. That's fine. All right, let me go and get a battery and see what I can do here and see if it actually works. Ignore the mess, that was the dog. So we've got a nearly fully charged Bosch, 18 volt, eight amp battery. We've got some singles there, so let's strip this in. And then I'm gonna kill this round, the battery can the battery terminals on the van. Oh, I heard the doors. Something work on the doors, let's have a look at this. Oh, I don't know where I put the key. <laughs> Found the key. Let's see if that trick actually does work. No way. <laughs> I'm just gonna reconnect that, guys, hang on. I just had to redo that for a YouTube short, so you might have already seen that, but I was so impressed that that actually worked. That was so, it was flatline, it was dead, it was hard. It wasn't going anywhere, there was no resuscitating that. 12 volt battery, bit of two five singles. <laughs> No problem. Anyway, what are the plans today? I'm gonna to do some racking. We're gonna to nip to b and and might turn up in a little bit. But I don't, can't remember what I put in the back of this because I had a bit of a tidy for the van vault video. Oh, for God's sake. This is what we've got to play with now. That door card. Look at the old fags in here. B&M blue. Awesome. I've got the card back to go on there. First job is I'm gonna pull the van vault out. Well, I'll show it you. It was a van vault slim slider. where that bolt's come from. But I put matting down, but I want this going down. So we're gonna take some of the matting back up, create a false floor like in the back of mine, and then we can start measuring. We're gonna do some racking on one side. Let's stick the lights back up. Remember the last time I put this in as well, my, uh, I was in the, the, the peak of a bad back. Now, <laughs> no problem. Still it's kind of heavy though. I'm gonna lie. <laughs> Oh, what a lovely little clean van. I know it's quite dark on the camera, but we need to figure out what we want to do. We can take the floor back up, annoyingly, and then we can measure out what size ply we want to want. Probably 18 mil ply for the top of this, probably 12 mil ply for this. All right, everyone's using this, everyone's promoting it. Honestly, because it's sick. CT1 clear, and let's stick them back up, because they have fell down quite a few times. We'll go around, these ones seem to have stuck all right. But uh, the battery, I've turned the engine off so you guys can hear me. But then the battery's flat again, so the lights don't work. So it's got some uni lights stuck up here and here. Just give you guys a bit of a view. And then we'll get into the real nitty gritty stuff that you all want to see. Did stick this down with, yeah. Not that it's, oh, it has a bit. And then we'll do something a bit controversial, which I know a few people are going to shout at me for with the van vault, but uh, oh, come on. Oh, yeah, very lightheaded. I say Adam would have been smelt, but probably not. <laughs> I'm not going to keep it centralized because we've got a tiny little gap each side, but realistically, if we shunt it to one side, we'll give ourselves enough gap that levels bits of wood, rods, that sort of stuff as an electrician can go down there, keep a little storage part very similar to mine. Right, what I'm checking, if I run this to the front edge here, that both the doors can shut comfortably. And equally, I'm having, I don't know, half inch gap down there that's not gonna rub metal to metal and make a horrendous noise. And shut one door. Oh, loads of clearance. Oh, there's loads of room, so we can actually bring it forward in a, an inch or so. It needs to get higher. So what my controversial thing is, I lost the bolt, because this was given to me uh, by Jamie Blayson, as he's known on YouTube and, and Twitter and everything. Uh, but there's no fixing bolts, there's nothing like that. And uh, 
I could have just screwed it to the ply, but PGB, power gram bond, we'll keep it in place. But because we're doing a wooden frame on the top, it's gonna to secure it in place, and, and that's, that's my methodology behind it. It's the same thing when I get the new license plates here, I'm just gonna glue them on like I did my van. So let me uh, open this up, we'll get it set up, and then I'm gonna run some blobs on the, sip, uh, on the base of the floor and a little bit on the top. You can see on the indents here, it's not gonna hit it, but we'll do it on the, the flat surfaces and that will adhere to it. And then by the time we've measured up, that's there, we'll then have set, we can then put the ply on top and start doing some racking. <laughs> also, if this falls, <laughs> my arm is getting absolutely crushed. If you guys have ever used this, you know it full well. If you try and lift this van vault out with a crowbar, all that's gonna happen is the ply board that it's attached to is gonna be coming with it. Simple as that. It, 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 and then the ply board is a screwed and glued to the floor. So it's not gonna be as strong as physically bolting it through the frame, but realistically, it ain't far off whatsoever. Right, we've got them in. Now, not break my wrists. Oh, that's uh, loud. Not this forward. Right, I'm gonna use all 17 stone of me now. I'm just gonna compress it, like so. That would have done the job nicely. Right, take the measure out now. We're gonna measure the top. We're gonna to do a dip down, same as my van. The ply will come and it will shear down on the far side. All right, it's 120, but we wanna go to this point to the van where it should be touching, which is gonna be here. <laughs> this is just depending how well I cut it, to be honest. Uh, 120 by uh, one, one, four, three. Just had a look on the uh, my phone. I, I, when I first thought about doing this, I got loads of van racking ideas and pictures and whatnot, but I'm, I'm pretty much just gonna wing it today. So what we'll do is go and get a sheet of 18 mil ply cut down to roughly what we need, and we can jigsaw around and get out the wheel arches, do that sort of stuff. Get the fix down, get the matting back on. And now I'm gonna go over and buy uh, probably two sheets of 12 mil ply. and just hope to that they go in the van. My van is empty, I've emptied most of the stuff out, and we will just have a play. I've got chop saws, I've got brand new circular saws, I've got jigsaws, I've got all the stuff I need. So we can make it all here, in house, in the workshop. <laughs> in the messy workshop. <laughs> you know when you see the people at B&Q where they're really struggling to get this like three meter length of wood or something in the van or their car, you think that's not gonna fit. Idiot, got the, the big one, this 18 mil cut down. And I thought that 2.4, by 120 would fit in my van, which I, I thought I had, but they're slightly bigger than plasterboard sheets. But because I've got the bulkhead bit at the back of my van, it wouldn't fit in. So Numpty here took all of his actual big power tools out, and that's to do it with the 12 volt, roughly by end, and cut it down to fit in the van. So anyway, 160 pounds, that's just cost. Don't tell me the other half. That should be stuck down now, which it is. One of these is our cut. One of these, this should be our cut here. So we're gonna put that up on the worktop in a second, get the measure out. We're gonna try and do our scribes, our measurements to cut all these out with a jigsaw, nice and neat. This will then sit on the top. I'll probably just glue this to this as well. We can do the return and we'll be jumping backwards and forth. I've been gone for about an hour. I didn't realize my U-lights were still in there. Anyway, yeah, let's get this out and we'll get some measuring and some cutting done. All right, there's loads of ways and means and everything you can do cardboard cut out so if we had a long piece of cardboard which i don't have here we could put it we could scribe we could cut it we could put this on the floor we can do measurements for this is going to be i mean that's 10 inches isn't it you know four inches in we've then got our crease across this is the depth like you can measure it like that but i'm just going to plonk this in place to roughly where we want it which is there and there and give myself some pencil guides for depth so we know that's coming out here the furthest bit is here, going across, and then down here, it starts to curve back by the looks of it. It ain't gonna be perfect, but all this cuts, we're gonna have racking sand top if you ain't gonna see it, but this is the, the theory behind it. So we've got some pencil marks there. I can lift it up, wedge it down, do the same thing that side, get the jigsaw out. And unfortunately, it's just cut a bit, put it in, cut a bit, take it out, cut a bit, put it in, okay. Like a Friday night. Awesome. 
And what it is, I'm hoping, because I've done this in one cut, if this goes in, and it's pretty good, that's come out of there, all I've got to do is flip that round, put it that side, draw on that, because left and right are identical, it should slot straight in. But we know the way I do things is, it never happens first time. Oh no, yeah, absolutely smash that, yeah. Like a few things in life, a few things come to mind. You're never very good at it the very first time, or the second, or even to the tenth. It takes time, it takes practice. Same thing with this. It takes time and it takes practice. But we're looking down at that, that square across where we want it to on the van vault. That side there should push down once the base goes flat. So measure out, use our bit there, trace round, cut that out. And we've also got this little annoying bit for the van door as well. Look at that. God, you can barely fit anything in there. Um, so that's in, I'm happy with that. We've got a little tunnel through there. But the problem we've got now is you've got this overhang, which we need here to block in the back. But you've got that bit, but I honestly think I'm just gonna leave it like that. It means you can put storage in there for toolboxes, put stuff on top here. I will leave this bit open so you can access the tunnel from in there as well, and we'll just block this side up as well so we can glue it all together. So, so far so good. I think now, stick a bit of power gram bond on top of that, get that fixed down, and then we can start putting the matting back on and start putting some racking up on the sides. So whoever wins the van, if you ever want to sell it, you're gonna have to sell it with a van vault and the wood in, because this ain't gonna come out. BGB all over, let's get it. Right, right taking my fingers off here. Oh, it's like Adam's house at the weekend. Not with Adam, you, you know the joke by now guys, it's fine. I should have really done this before, but I'm just gonna run some sandpaper around, take the edges off. Got straight edge, Whoa. say we've got a straight edge, let me pull this, there we go. Right. Next we're gonna do the return bit at the back, so I can get that fixed on. 19 centimeters, not 18 and a half. We just set the depth gauge on the Bosch circular saw. So let's get that. Screws will pinch that down. That means we've got this access here that we can still get stuff in and out of. I'm very tempted here just to get the jigsaw on. I'll we'll put something around there just to give it a nice curved edge so you're not hitting your pelvis or your top of your legs on that because that ain't gonna be nice. I'm just gonna go around with a little pilot bit. My backstory, that's what I wanted to do growing up. And I went to college to be a chippy and they turned around and said, you got good grades, why don't you be an electrician? And that is why I'm an electrician. What I'm gonna do here, I've got some L brackets. I'm gonna put an L bracket here, L bracket here and that will be covered up by the matting. Okay, we've got that in, I've got the back bit sprayed. Now, for some reason, the unit I've got my daughter, I would say this is Halloween because it has black cats on it, but then it's got oranges, leaves. Is it a Christmas plate? And there's spiders. You tell me, anyway, let's go in there and I'm gonna draw around that to give myself a bit of an edge. Next, we've got the matting, so I wanna put the matting down, it's overlapping, it doesn't really matter about this side, what I end up might doing. Oh no, I'll, I'll just leave it as is, because this side of the racking is gonna be built on it. I am gonna do some this side as well, but we've got coverage across the edge here, or coverage on the back. While well, I've got some sticky spray, which is here, I might as well get this stuck down now, and then we can start having a look at what we're gonna do with the racking. Onto the racking, right. The two bits that I had to chop off to get in the van. The thought process behind it is if you want to put stuff in down this side, we want to be able to put stackers in and I'm going to do the same thing that side, very similar to my other van. I'll attach a picture now if I actually get round to it today. So these are, well, we're going to go 400 deep. Luckily, aha, I cut this 400 and then this one, um, <laughs> 
for you. Uh, so we're going to make two uprights and we need to measure floor to ceiling, get that cut, and then we're going to have to do the same thing, scribe the back out. It's just ended up going to be just a big arch at the back. But as long as he's level and flush and in line, these are going to be our uprights. We'll get them bottled back with some L brackets onto the framework of the, uh, the van. We can start getting some shelves in and just work across. We're going to do three uprights, one here, one in the middle, one at the end. The end one potentially full length, if not we can just stop it on the end of the van vault so you can have full length of the van there if you want to slide your ladders in. Let me slide my ladders in, see if actually they actually fit. To be honest with you, I don't think these will fit because they only just fit in my van and it's three, three seats wide. Oh God, could you imagine? Let me angle it that way a little bit. And these are the uh, little giant King Kong, King Combo ladders. Ha 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 Je suis croissant. Right, I'm not going to take the racking all the way along, so we can do that. So that's going to be really helpful for someone who ever gets this far. Let me just... Look. Yeah, so you're going to have to put it in on the angle like that, so the feet are like that, and then the top of the ladders are square as well, so... I don't have one of them guide rails that people seem to have. I can't remember quite what they're called. <laughs> that's 400. This is... Yeah, I didn't do very well, but I clamped that on there. I've measured that out for the same size of the frame. So as and when I run my blade down it now, if I just follow along the edge of the spirit level, I'll get a clean cut, but I'm not too concerned about this being that far off because we're gonna have to trim that much off the inside of the van. It will actually meet itself and we'll end up taking it off anyway. So there's our clean cut. You can see how much that one's out, but like I said, doesn't really matter. Right, so that's skimming the ceiling. It's roughly where we're gonna start. I'm not gonna start from right on the edge here because we've got the framework, which is just pointless. So at least if you have it here, you can put some hooks on it, you can hang some stuff off the back like ours. Same thing again, contouring. We need to make sure that we're going below here. Get the shape. What we'll do is just cut this bit out first, push that back, see where it hits next which will be here, chop some of this out, push it back. It's just backwards and forwards. But unfortunately, we're gonna to have to do this in every single one because every single one is gonna be a different frame contour to the van work. So yeah, in and out, in and out, in and out again. <laughs> I never told anyone I was good at this, but that's, uh, that's our scribe going up. Realistically, I could probably take a touch more off in this corner here just to push it back a little bit more. But yeah, that's that, all I've been doing, like I so. say. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So we can just use this now as a template for that one. <laughs> Change my mind, we've got three. So I'm gonna equally space them out. We're gonna make some shelves for it, a runner across the top to keep the strength, self-tapper it to it, but I'm gonna sort of build it in place so I know what I'm fixing to. So obviously said the, I've copied this one, the curves aren't exactly the same, but it is what it is. Look at that little line there, beautiful. Right, so what I've gone and done, I've cut off some 18 mil, I've done some strips, so we've got some supports for 18 mil, which screwed side by side there. We've got 48, 48, so we've got matching shelves to go in there and there. That one's screwed together, nothing's fixed back to the framework yet, because I want to make sure that we've got our shelving square, and it's as solid as it can be all together, and then we'll self-tap it all the way back, as and when we can, we get some good fixings all across that top strut. We can fix ins all across there, and in here, obviously we do want to make sure we're not doing it here and piercing through the van. So uh, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm probably going to get, obviously, another shelf there and then another two top and bottom. And then we'll do some strips that sit out from the front to allow you to put some stuff in. And then if we've got time, we're going to start that one as well. Right, that's getting somewhere. You forget how long these things take. Oh, I forget how long things take. Jesus, it's uh, half one. I've been doing this since half eight. But I have been to b and I have had a sandwich, so. Adam's coming in a minute with a coffee. Uh, last thing I want to do is do some trims. So we'll do a little trim across the front there and across the top there. That'll pinch it all together as well. And then we can chuck that in and see what it looks like. There we have it. Adam's gracious with his presence. Brought me a coffee. We've got that in now. I've brought it right to the edge of that. So what we've got is some L brackets now. We're going to put some on the feet either side. I'm not going to put one on that side. These L brackets and they're not, look how bent it is. Ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going to bring it around there, there and there, one this side as well. Step that back a bit. Once we've got the feet in, we can start looking at doing them on the struts and the uprights like this to keep it all bolted. Up and there, like I say, 
self-tappers in the framework. As long as it's on the bit that you can see through, you don't go through this, you sound. There we go. Screwed in, it's rock, rock solid up there. You can see I'm actually shaking the whole van from doing that. So that's decent, I just need some black spray paint on it. Uh, it's just generic drawers, obviously stuff can fall off the back, but uh, it's meant for boxes, like plastic boxes, like that sort of thing. Put them in there. But now we've got, we've got time, it's only quarter past two. Let's get this side up. I'm gonna go and have a look at my van now to sort of see the process that I went through, because I can't remember. It was a three years ago. What a mess this is as well. So I'm not gonna do a double one, it's just gonna be a single one. So this is out of 18 mil ply. It's quite a simple process. So I doubled up those, looking at that and getting the angle in. So yeah, I'll make a nice little addition to that van and then that's, I wouldn't fall that far off then. All right, let's copy this. Right, we just took a little bit of a break. So Adam's just done some insurance quotes on that van. I just said to him, if you, I need it running around for a bit. It needs to be in use and not just sat here. It's, it's currently not insured and it's sawn off the road because it's been here for <laughs> nine, 10 months, something like that. I'm just done an insurance quote on it and it come back as like two and a half grand, something like that. Yep. So I've just done an insurance quote on it and it come back as 212, 220 quid, something like that, fully comp for what it is. And then I've added Adam on as an additional driver, as an employee, and then it's now 2,025 pounds with the black box fitted, which is immense. And then without a black box fitted, it's 2,230. So realistically, Adam will be an extra two grand on the policy to have it as standard, just to have him as an additional driver to drive that old van every now and then. Yeah, it's mental. That's just pocket change, isn't it? I burn money like that to keep warm at night. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I had when I first bought a van. It was two and a half grand for a Vivaro, Rocks of Vivaro 1.9, whatever it was, six speed. I thought it was five speed for two years until my boss said to me, "New has the six gears on this Nick because the, the top of the knob had worn off. Hang on. Wait, what were we doing? Blah, blah, blah. I think this bit's quite important because that's making that bit. So how I did it, I've got these strips, 20, 20 centimeters long for here, for the runners. Put this position in here so we want a bit of an angle going down we want a little bit of play going in and out between the runners and all i'm doing is going up i could measure this out but what's, i think it's just easier if you just move that up and once we've got all them in i don't know how i'm going to fit i could end up having six high and then just duplicate that across and then there's no support i might screw a bracket across the top to support and pinch it together but I won't be doing that at the back. But if I do, I will do it. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. Well, I saw one of them things jigsaw. I'll get to it when I get to it. But uh, yeah, that's sort of the process of going up and how we make these supports going into here. Sometimes, sometimes I do surprise myself. There we go. Top one's a bit tight, but. It's in. It's strong, that's in, that's strong. It's all, all, all getting somewhere. You haven't really got space for another one, but I'm happy with that. It's, uh, yeah, and I've still got a whole, well, one and a half sheets of ply left. I should have really measured it out, but that's 45 pounds worth of wood just there. Mental. But I think the day's come to an end. It is, it's half past three now. I've got to get my lad at half past four because he's got a football club after school. Um, but I'm gonna, well, try and tidy this up now, but to be with the chance of winning this, at some point you have to be a subscriber and I have to have proof that you're a subscriber and I'm gonna run some form of competition or something, I don't know yet. If you have any idea about how I can give this van away when I hit 100,000, yeah, it's gonna be after I hit 100K, we're gonna give this away. I need to MOT it, I need to um, mess around with the brakes a little bit because it's been seized, it's been sat here for that long. Uh, so I'm gonna get started now. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on there. I can take some more pictures and whatnot of this and we're gonna spray this black, maybe do a few more things. If you think of any other ideas now, while I've still got it, that we can add to the van to make it a bit more desirable for the next person, let me know below and I'll see you in the next one. Love you, bye.